<laughs> so on PC. Oh my God. So unawoke. Holy Lord. Yeah, but it's happy hour, right? It is. It's you and me, man. It's, it's been funny. three weeks. Yeah. That's too long. Well, man. That was after a break of a couple of weeks. So it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. So but, it's really uh, just you know, been... you're a world traveler. So we had to catch up, you know, over yeah. the time, back over again. Yeah. Yep, yep. They're living the life of Riley. Now, I don't know fucking who Riley is. I don't know why everybody talks about him all the time. Me either. But he must have had some airline miles. Um, yeah, so been back in Spain for two weeks, but uh, two and a half weeks now. Uh, but for the first two weeks, we were all living together in this right. little one-bedroom apartment. Right. And it was not as bad as I had expected. Um I had a mattress that I uh, that I would lean against the wall behind me, and when it was time for bed, I would like put it down underneath my desk and and sleep. And my wife and the two kids took the bedroom with a mattress on the floor, and it generally just sort of worked. Um, the uh, sometimes we would come back from the beach, and everyone would want to have a shower, and and with only one only one bathroom, there would be, right. be sort of a queue. But uh, and how general, far is the beach? Is it a walk <clears> or a drive? It's a five minute drive, but, um, but in August it's a five minute drive followed by a 35 minute search for a place to park. Um, oh. so it's a little bit. And walking or biking is it or not? Well, you don't have bikes. Do you? Well, we do have, we do have bikes. Um, but biking when you're all Sandy on the way home, uh, <laughs> doesn't feel <laughs> like it would be nice. Drink. I don't know. Oh God. So Sandy on the way home. <laughs> you're Sandy in the car. <laughs> yeah, but you're not. We uh, went to the beach as well, no. man. We went to the uh, Big Lake, Michigan. Nikki and I, we went to Lions Beach, mm -hmm. which is uh, a beach in St. Joseph, Michigan, one of the top 100 beaches in the world. If you care to look it up, post it. Ooh. It's an interesting uh, note. Silver Beach is uh, the one that's award winning. We were a little bit, bit away from that. The water was great. I went in a couple of times and uh, it was real small rocks that was difficult to walk on until yeah. you got tip deep and then it was sand. Nice. And I mean, perfect sand. And so the trick was to, you know, walk on your hands floating in the water. On the, right, right, right. Avoid the snows. I'm tender footed. Well, some you would love, are, some people are. You would love our beach. Our beach is the finest sand I've ever seen. Uh, but you have to go out like, 200 yards to get up to tit deep like it's so so shallow uh, um, is it warm uh it's a little bit like whoa that's cold when you first get in but then it's lovely uh -huh. when you're in uh, yeah this so. wasn't even so much that this was warmer than that this was oh my this is rather warm and of course just when you get to you know ball deep is the first impediment <laughs> that's right. cold and then tit deep is the next it seemed to be your sexual organs are all akin to how cold the water is and right they do funny things. You don't ask them to. You don't expect it. You don't. You don't wish that it didn't happen, but it happens every time. Uh oh, what's it's, that? Whoa! It's not, yeah, it's not every day that you're uh, that you're uh, you know sensing the world with your nipples. You know. That's right. That's right. It's, At least uh, I, I generally don't. It's thankfully it's thankfully frequent enough. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. 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 So, let's see. Our house project is coming along more slowly than expected, as as expected. Did you move back? No, not yet. And uh, so you're all still crowded. Well, except that uh, my wife took the kids because I'm on oh, Rodriguez, right. Rodriguez, uh, Rodriguez this right. this week, and she's going to come back and leave them there for another two weeks. Uh, so it's uh -huh. just going to be um, the two of the, you, the two of us here. A romantic, and, exactly. And this is a this is a perf This is a really nice sized apartment for one person and pretty good for, for two people. But yeah. uh, beyond that, it gets, gets tight. Yeah. Um, and so in that time, we're hoping to finish, I don't know about everything, but um, they're, they've painted all of the upstairs and the stairwell and they've painted all the doors and they've, um, and now they're painting the big uh, living room. And today, for instance, they had to, um, they had to paint the wall where the, where the, um, where my internet connection comes in. And so they, they came over and said, uh, we need to unplug this internet thing for a couple hours. And I was like, okay, I can, I can get enough connection with, with, with my phone. Uh, but uh, it's coming along. It's looking, it's looking good. I mean, the, yeah, you happy? The, the floor is filthy. I think it's going to be nice. Uh, yeah. I, I, we're going, I think we're going to be very, very happy. 
Yeah. And um, while she was here, uh, my wife and I went sofa shopping, and we are super picky sofa. Like I would imagine, we, we as want. am I. I've owned the same sofa, which cost me 20 years ago thousands of dollars. Right. And I still have it. It is built so well, so firm. I sleep on it. Occasionally, I did last night because it was too hot upstairs. But right. yes, I'm, I'm with you on couches. I pick them, and I pick them because I want them to last just about a long time. Well, and our, our main problem is that uh, we're so different in height that a sofa that's perfect for her is too small for like the the dimensions of uh from your back to your knee and then from your knee to the floor uh are different but a, different a, needs. A, a little person can make it fit on a big person's couch well the she wants to have her is not true the opposite is not true she wants to have a her big feet person touch cannot the... work it out on a little person's couch yeah but she wants to be able to have her feet on the floor which well is buy her a little a little stool <laughs> <laughs> with a step on it there you go honey well, you know what you could use that'd be cheap enough. Those uh, they're like uh, they go over the uh, a toilet for a toddler, mm -hmm. and there's one step, and then there's a seat. Right. Well, you could you could do that. Plus, you'd have a place where she'd sit on the couch and she wanted to slip off because it was so big. Right. Uh, so we, but they um, the modern sofas have uh, they're adjustable in ways where you can uh, pull out the bottom part from the from the back to make them a little bit deeper and stuff like that anyway we spent several hours the first hour going and sitting on every single sofa in this huge warehouse and being like nope so nope. after you sat on five or six of them did you say so far so good we did we did and it, it although it was really so far so bad because it was we were it's it's really quickly to it's really easy to say nope not this one because you you feel it you didn't give it a score so you could no because there were so many, we didn't mind, you know, just discard, no, no, discarding no, no, so many. No. You never but, uh, but then the, the the sales lady came out and she explained all the terminology and the features of the sofas that we we didn't know or didn't notice. And also, she did a great job of assessing our needs and and having, you know, she took she said, okay, I think maybe this one. And then we would say that's too firm. And then she kissed, and then she like sort of. Did this decision tree where she uh, where she could cut out half of the things and then focus on the ones and finally we we got to one that uh, that we really like and uh, but he bought it we're we're probably going to buy it we uh, we need to run it consider, by the consider yeah, your finances run it by the the uh, our interior designer guy to uh -huh. like see what what colors should should be chosen and yes, stuff like that but right uh, but I think so we, I had a, I have a question and and so do, does it do you did you get uh, sitting chairs along with the couch. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excellent question. Are they the, recliners? Uh, so, my wife, I, I don't share this with her, but she's for a long time wanted to have two sofas in the living room, and we have barely big enough room that we can accommodate that. But we also did check out some some recliners, and and they were they were quite nice. I think we're going to get one of those too. They're the cat's ass. We've got uh, we got two of them in in the house. And most of so most of the sofas and the recliners these days are electric in some way, like you, you can plug them in and then. Uh, I wouldn't say most, but they're available. At least that's my experience. But I didn't go shopping like you did. So yeah, it's 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 definitely most. It's um, it's sort of like getting one that uh, is manual is sort of like getting a manual drive car in the states. Like it, oh, you right. could find them, but not anymore. Uh, I got you. Well, barely. it's been a while for me. And so um, it. So anyway, but the 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 one the ones that that, that we were shown are uh, are quite easy to operate just with with some some leverage if you learn where to hold it, push and, and pull and whatnot. So um, we're probably gonna get one of those to to put on the on the other side to. Uh, so your and, TV is in your living room, no doubt. Yes. Yes. On, and how big on is the wall. screen? Big, I'll bet. Uh, well, we're gonna get a new one, and I'm gonna get the biggest one that fits in the in the furniture piece that the guy is, has has. Uh, is building for us. Uh, 54. It's going to be fucking huge. Uh, no, more like 85. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a big room, so like you don't well, sit you know, so you close told to me, the TV. You told me that staying with you, you know, I said, hey, how, how long would it, would it, would, you know, if somebody stayed with you in your little apartment over there, after how long would it feel like too long? You know what you said? What did I say? <laughs> Three months. <laughs> I said, oh my God, that's where I'm going to retire. <laughs> Nikki, I'll see you. In, I'll see you in exactly three months. Bye. That's great. 
<laughs> so anyway, that's 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 my plan. Um, I haven't done the shopping, but I generally know the the type and, and right. model and stuff. So um, you've uh, you've been busy, I understand. Did you finish your binge of uh, of the man who fell to Earth? I did. What an interesting television program. I th- I I was glued to the set. I was fascinated from point one to end point. I I can't say enough about it. I was surprised again and again. So, okay, say say more. Like, no, hey, that's it. That's my summary. You just said that's you can't say enough report. about it. That's my <laughs> you just report. did. No, it was it was really good. I um took me a while to recognize the the protagonist. Um, he was in uh, Twelve Years a Slave and probably got an Oscar for that. Uh, but he did an amazing job, and the he's also in Westworld, uh, big time. I, I believe that. He plays he plays a younger version of, of Bill, who uh, astounding. Another story though, but yeah, uh, and he was fucking crazy. He was crazier than a bed bug, which made it all the more riveting. And as it turns out, he was a dunderhead. You know the the the, the false. Uh, raid and the lost lives and his miscalculations and never quite getting it right and oh uh, god who are, you, who are you talking about the uh, the CIA dude okay okay you, so you're okay you, no I was talking about the um he's not the protagonist the the, the alien guy is the guy I was talking about oh and what, I know what, what, I know the CIA guys in Westworld oh oh I see ah the I forget his name it's hard to pronounce but um <clears throat> one thing I noticed is the way one trick that he used to seem alien is uh is he would not move his arms when he walked right keep his arms at his side and, and walk like that and it's really hard to do but if you walk like that you're gonna look like a weirdo right. you know who else does that speaking of westworld dolores hmm. when uh, dolores makes copies of herself in different uh facsimiles of, of people mm-hmm. um you know that sh- that they're copies because they walk like like her. She made two copies of herself and put herself in other bodies. So there were three of her. Okay. And all three of them, regardless of their physical attributes, had her, uh, uh, you know. Brain, mind, whatever. No, uh, persona. Chip. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, all together in history. And uh, which fat backfired on her because, because just like she would, they were independent. <laughs> it's like, what did you think would happen? Anyway, yeah, I feel I, like having kids. Back to this. So, um, but that must be a, a, a just a known Hollywood trick of making someone look like an alien or an or a, or a robot. Is I don't to... know. I don't know. There's well, we know that that two two people have two people have done it. But I, now that you mention it, you could probably think back to Martian. I movies. bet. I bet if you go back and look at say Mork and Mindy, I bet they might be using that. Oh, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> but it anyway. was pretty crazy. Uh, so yeah, it, I, I enjoyed the whole the whole arc of the thing. Um, a couple of little tidbits that I noticed along the way was that um, uh, Edie, the the black woman that was helping him, uh, and no, that was Justin. Edie was the was the was the was the evil English corporate girl. Um, they both wore uh, the same gold ring earrings. That were just like the gold coins that he brought to, to pawn. Isn't that weird? Ah, interesting observation. And I also, it's it's not the first time I've seen this trope, but I I love the idea of a super genius that uh, has, in the same way that uh, you you get your movies about um, like super fighter people that have retired from the from that and then someone comes back and bothers them and they have to kick a bunch of ass uh i like the the mental version of a super quantum physicist that uh is sort of hiding away and doing menial labor but then it needs to be called upon to uh, do great things right uh, i like that that right. storyline well and, I, I i and and uh what's the dude's name bill um bill nye nye yeah who who was in he's amazing the best christmas uh, Love Actually. Uh, movie uh, ever. Yeah. All I Want for Christmas, right? Love Actually, I believe. Is the one you what read. is it? Love Actually is the yeah. Christmas movie he was in in big. Oh, it was Ensemble. Yeah. Right. Right. With uh, the that's, British that's where I got Emma to. Thompson. 
Yeah, well, lots, lots of British people, but yeah. And uh, and Alan Rickman, yep. who was so funny. And Colin Firth, and yeah. He got busted so bad. Oh, yeah, Colin Firth, which was, I love that story. That was, that was the heart of it, you know, the whole town coming out and him learning enough Portuguese to... Right. To exactly. to, to, yeah, that was, I that love that. Of course, there wasn't, there wasn't much not to love about that movie, but yeah, I remember I seeing ended that. Up falling in love with his uh, with his manager. Right. <laughs> that had uh, you're the love of my life, as it turns out. Right. Uh, and yeah, he was he was great in this too. He he's great at portraying that like strange old hip strange British guy. Um, so I did actually some extra credit homework and I went and I watched the original David Bowie version. Oh my word. From 1976. Aren't you eager beaver? And so you, you remember to Bill to the front of the class, you remember Bill Nye's character. His name was uh, Thomas Jerome Newton. Yeah. Uh, and he had come 45 years ago and turns out that's Bowie's character. Oh, that movie's from 45 years ago. He 45 years ago, 76. Yep. Ah. And he also came and was very thirsty. And he also had a bunch of rings with him that he pawned to, to get spending money. And in a very weird, like, don't think about it too much turn. He like the first thing he did when he got to earth was go to the patent office and register all these patents, which is like the, the whole, one of the key points <laughs> of, the, of the series. And the and the businessmen are like, well, wow, looking at all this math on the on these sheets, and 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 he says, how much is this worth? And they said, I don't know, like three hundred million. And he was like, oh, is that all? And but he's super he's super weird, of course. And he he's got his his girlfriend Mary Lou, who we turned who turned into the nun later in life, uh, who was super religious and got him hooked on gin. How about the bees climbing all over her face and her that was, letting that was pretty sting weird. her as a as a form of penance? Yeah, for what, for what she did. There was no mention of bees in the, in this in this one, but um, it what did surprise me it's, was it's, well, and it's just it's a good example of the enriched writing that took place, you know, with the right. core of the of the book. You know, I'd right. love to go back and read the book, but the 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 highlight to me. And I remember this, and I, I I didn't go back and do any review, even though it's been a while since I finished it. Um, so so this is with some distance from it. The highlight to me was when we learned that they were going to all come to Earth, and what that meant to the world, considering the inevitable mix of DNA that uh, Justin's dad. Uh, maybe you know the dude's name, the character's name, Justin's dad. Uh, no, um, but wow, he, that was an amazing performance too. Oh, uh, astounding. He was so good. I, so, my, so good. My, I had the scene where he went in and, and, uh, said, wait a minute to his granddaughter and went in and started playing guitar. Yeah. It that was, was amazing. <laughs> it, it was like, oh yeah. Okay. I'll take some of that DNA. <laughs> and just how much, uh, how much he loved jazz and how it was, it was a little cheesy how, uh, like the solution to the to the equations was jazz man you had to improvise to uh to solve the whatever equations he was working on um but you know that's kind of kind of cute <laughs> oh, it's so uh it's so great to see the the culmination of all that in the, the i love the uh space travel segments that were amazingly graphic and uh Incredible somehow, um, right? You know, and him and his former body, his former self, before right. he morphed, climbing out of the fucking hole, man, where the meteor hit. That, that opening sequence is enough to, you know, when you're Never watching that opening sequence, you're you're hooked. Right, exactly. You know, it. I mean, you know, it's going to be a roller coaster. As you might imagine, the uh, space travel footage in the 1976 version is. Uh, Different. Less detailed. Yeah, is it, uh, like rockets <laughs> on a string, lasers, and, and the stuff, old yeah. uh, Flash Gordon when they when they literally were uh, had uh, cardboard rockets on strings, and no. you could see you could see the strings and the light. This was right, right. <laughs> I was you know six years old, so it was you know sixty one years ago, probably a little bit before your time. A little bit. The other thing that surprised me about this nineteen seventy six movie was all the sex. 
it's just nonstop sex. And oh, really? Yeah, it's it's so um, the there's just there's just so much of it. Uh, and uh, like the alien and Justin. No, 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 no. This is the I'm talking about the old one, which is just. Yeah, I know. Uh, but, but, well, uh, it's not Justin. No, it's Mary. Mary Lou. Mary yeah. Lou. Uh, yeah, they they do a whole bunch, and then there's other there's like a college professor that joins the company, and but but before he joins the company, he's just like sleeping with all the coeds. Well, how and graphic is it? I mean, they're not. It's no nudity in it. It's all full full nudity. No shit. Both sexes. <laughs> yes. No shit. There's so many pubes, which surprised me that that movies were like that and uh, back then. But like, <laughs> yeah. can you imagine getting cast to roll around naked with this huge pop star uh, in in a movie like that's gotta be no, weird. I can't with that particular pop star. If I'm allowed to switch into another pop star, then yes, yeah. I could imagine it. <laughs> but it, uh, yeah, they. I don't know if they needed to get butts in the seats or something, and they put a whole whole bunch of whole bunch of sex. But uh, one other thing that I noticed. This is the last one that um, his one of his employees that uh, the guy that's the, um, the college professor that. Uh, that's sleeping with all these people is played by someone we've mentioned before on the podcast with the best name ever, uh, Rip Torn. Oh yes. Uh, who went on to be in men in black. Another yes. movie. And, and, and several other just iconic films. Which, he, he, I, I've never seen him in a bad role that if I can, that I can recall, certainly not off the cuff here. Right. I've liked him and everything he's ever been in. So anyway, I thought that was interesting to, uh, Great Rick, name. Recognize him. It's funny best, that his mother named him Rip with a last name like Torn. I know. It's like, what? <laughs> Guess what? You, you I got saw, a thesaurus and was like, what you name the boy? Uh, I fell into a movie the other day that I was surprised uh, and, and happy. Was The World According to Garp with uh, Robin Williams. Yes. And um, John Lithgow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> An amazing performance. And. Um, who was the uh, the woman who played his mother was Glenn Close. And Glenn Close, this was her first movie. Wow. This is her first movie. And um, his girlfriend is Mary Beth Hurt. Now, when you uh, uh, think of The Family Man, which I'm sure you've seen with Nick Cage, right? Yes. Family? Yes. With Tia Leone. Yes, yes. Um, I've seen that. His secretary, when he's the rich industry leader is Mary Beth Hurt. Okay. Uh, matured in her uh, 60s by that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, knowing that and then seeing this when she literally looked like she was 14. Wow. And she was perfectly cast. <clears throat> and uh, what a weird movie. I read all the reviews too. I did some research on it afterwards because I was interested in, in what, what, what people thought of it. It was uh, in, by today's movie standards, very cheesy and... and uh, right. In, in, in ways. Robin Williams, I mean, was so contained uh, as to be unrecognizable as the manic comic. Right. Um, I have not actually seen that movie, um, but I, I definitely need to. The um, I saw, there's this great YouTube series. I've, I've, sent, I've sent you some where it's um, famous actors uh, going through some of their most iconic roles. Yes. Um, and I, I saw one with, with uh, Lithgow. Oh. Um, and what did he say? And he mentions the the world according to Garp and how he um, he he auditioned and didn't get it and you know was kind of uh, down because uh, he really liked the book, although he was curious about how they could turn that book into a movie. And then for some reason there was a there was another option, another time to go and read one more one more time. And he had just read a book by uh, by a transsexual woman talking about what that's like. And he brought some of that to to his reading, and uh, and they whatever it sort of clicked. They said you're you're too tall, but we'll take you anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, just a fascinating character. Um, and so I've seen some some clips of it, so I know a little bit of the story, but not that much. Well, I, I think you captured it when you said Lithgow didn't know how they would possibly put the book into a movie, and as it turns out, a lot of people think that that. It still hasn't been figured out. <laughs> <laughs> we saw yeah. that movie and said, uh, I don't know. Um, others loved it. But uh, so, 
Yeah. So a, uh, I've got a, a project of the week. This is a this is a picture of a house built in about 1939. Okay, got and, it. Uh, stone foundation. You know, I've redone the foundation. The that was a part of the story a couple of weeks ago. Episode, mm -hmm. whatever the fuck. Um, yeah, that was a good. And one. Uh, I moved now since my son has gone doing uh, construction work in Arkansas, in Little Rock. I'm doing the windows, and so when you look at the window, there's a wooden frame that's screwed in and it's a storm window. And when you pull the storm window off and you look at the back of it, it's pristine wood that looks pretty much the same it did, a little dirty, mm -hmm. when they put it up in 1939. All one piece, all together, these metal clasps Perfectly that hold sheltered. The, the screen in, or the, in this case, the window in, and down in the basement are the screens. Um, but once you take that off, then you have behind there a double pane rising and lowering window, all the windows need glazing. It's all dried and cracked. All what, does that, what does that mean, glazing a window? The, the little uh, putty stuff you put in to hold it in place, along uh, with what's called pinpoints, which are uh, the modern version of the pinpoint is a, is a M-shaped little tiny little tack. And on the bottom of it is a point. And so uh, it's got a couple of fins on it. So when you put it on the glass and you push it in, the pointy end goes into the wood and the M holds it into place. And there's a little upright to keep it perfect. It's a great invention. Back in the day, they used to use little tacks and a little hammer. <laughs> it's like, we don't do that no more. So I glazed them uh, instead of using glaze, which takes two days to dry. I found a YouTube video to confirm my suspicion that I could use spackle, which is a substance that is built now um, that it is so light that it's like uh, picking up something a little bit heavier than soap bubbles. <laughs> and you put it on your blade, and when you, you know, you put it in your area there to hold the glass in, which is a, a triangle. It's a V. Right, okay. You know, and, and, you, and then you, you wet a putty knife, and you give it a, a large putty knife, and you give it a, a, a quick. And that's all got to be painted. It's four coats of paint, wow. two coats of primer, two coats of finish. And each window takes me a little bit more than eight hours of work each. And there's 12 of them. Okay. Sounds like a project. Well, I'm on number, I did number two today. <laughs> and, and two of them are on high ladder. So but it, to give you an idea, I, 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 I was looking at the windows and thinking I brought paint from home to paint the storm window burgundy against a yellow trim board, quite, mm -hmm. you know, poppy, pop, whoa, whoa, that's cool, man. Uh, but realized, of course, s s th thankfully, Ketchup and mustard, baby. yellow that I had certainly didn't match the aluminum siding that's in parts of the house that I don't want to replace, nor do I want to paint. Mm -hmm. So I had to go and buy a, a white, a gallon of white, $43 for a gallon. I got 10 bucks wow. off. But anyway, in order to match the aluminum, I need to get a piece of aluminum and I look in one of the windows, one of the window sills has an aluminum siding cap put on the window sill. They just cut it and hammered it and fashioned it. And it looked like it was, one of the nails was loose and I could easily remove it from the window sill and take it with me. It was about, you know, two feet long. And when I went to pull it off, the whole window sill came out, rotted from underneath the window. Uh, have I lost you? I guess we're going again. It's bizarre. So, your um, your window pane story. Oh, so uh, I uh, needed a hunk of tin. I saw a loose piece of tin that was a cover over a window sill that somebody Hold had on, need... to keep the window sill from rotting. And um, I went to uh, take the tin off, and the whole window sill broke off in my hand. <laughs> Oops. Oops. So that's a fix I got to make. That was a silly mistake. So, <laughs> so, uh, uh, but it's enjoyable work. It's not uh, jackhammering, and it's not bad on my back, and it's painting a little bit of carpentry, not much. But I, I, I thought maybe I could do two in a day. <laughs> Foolish me. We we have some jackhammering going on uh, down below this apartment is my kid's school, and they are ripping up. 
they, yeah, they are ripping up the entire playground, uh, concrete playground area and the nearby streets and are redoing it all uh, this summer vacation. Make it a and, green uh, space? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, they're going to... They're going to add more parking. Like, they're taking space away from the kids and giving it to the cars, which kind of sucks, I think, is the plan. But um, they're going to have a nicer newer park and i think they're planning on doing like a little rock climbing wall or and stuff like that i don't know but it's a uh, it's a bit noisy all day long yeah that's uh, my window but whatever. yeah well i'm that's glad to be uh i'm glad to be on a ladder painting i'm up and down off the ladder all day but rather than uh jackhammering hmm. both have their ups and downs right <laughs> oh yeah hey so uh um i have uh gotten into a version of netflix the old man with jeff bridges i have seen all of that in fact i re and, recommended it to you yes and it was like oh you damn fool you still can't get netflix well netflix apparently sells it to fx and fx plays it with commercials i don't think it's on can't. netflix huh? i don't think it's on netflix i think it's only on fx with commercials uh the that that's how I watched some of the episodes at my parents' house because they had really? it like devoed and you can skip through the commercials with maddening um, number of commercials. Yeah, they, they they built. You can tell it's not a Netflix show because it's structured to have commercial breaks. There are oh right. I think right. the writing has is made to have uh, breaks in between. But well, so I'm how, up how with it? You've but seen there's this, seven episodes. That I've seen. So seven. You've, you've seen them all. It, yeah, it that, ends it. that way. Yep, that's the end. It ends with him patting him on the back, walking into the uh, into the airport and the or the military of uh, wherever they landed their their jet, right? And her being discovered oh. as the third passenger, in fact, the old man's daughter. Uh, the old man is the is the terrorist. It's the Afghan. Right. That's the old man, not Jeff Bridges' character. Uh, I mean, the girl, the, 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 the FBI agent does arrive at, at the terrorist's house. Yes. Is the last and, and it is discovered at that moment that she, in fact, is the daughter, his daughter. How's that who discovered? Was who was stolen, who was stolen by his wife and her lover some 45 years ago. So Jeff Bridges is not that, not that father. No. And how is this no, known? And that's, and that was the, that was the, the third person in the two seats. Oh, that she was the third person. She was stolen. That was the mystery. Oh, okay. And, okay. and so th that was the, uh, I, I understood that it very well might have been the climax because that was the discovery. And yeah. the old man. Spoiler alert. But who, yeah. yeah, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say. The, the old man was dressed in his finest and standing ready to greet her. Right. right. And, uh, uh, and, uh, well, let's I, be honest. They're all old, they're all old men. I, well, the the name of the series was intentionally driven by him as an old man, but John Lithgow's character um, ended up in the final episode referring to him as the old man, uh, and that was right. when you realized ah, oh, the series is actually named about this old man. That was also like the point of discovery, saying. Oh my God! This thing is going to make a major twist and a turn, right. and switch from John Chase's <clears throat> character yeah. Dan to Chase. the king of uh, this, the the, all, yeah. the, this, the hoped to be king of, of Afghanistan. Um, yeah. her former husband. The it certainly ended in a in a um, sort of a plea to book us for another season. Did you did you not gather that this was his daughter? You you didn't you didn't get that they they. The, for the whole time, it was that she was Jeff Bridges' daughter was yes. what was the going thing, and yeah. uh, it didn't. I didn't think hard enough on the oh, if she was if she was on the plane, then it's then she had to have been born. Which well, they means, showed yeah. the scene of the mother taking the child out of the bedroom where the father was the old man at the time, a young man was yeah. sleeping. They showed you that scene. Damn, I must have missed the, that scene. In the yeah, hmm. that the mother took the child, and yeah, okay, he couldn't okay. kill 
or he took the child, but he couldn't kill him. He was supposed to kill him. Right, right. And he couldn't kill him in front of his daughter. Right, right. And so right. he took the daughter, and that, that, they showed that scene. Him with the gun pointed at the old man, him picking up the daughter who looked to be about five or six. Um, but that was why it was so, uh, that was the aha moment. It discovered it in the ending, not too terribly long after that. Right, right, right. Okay. Boy, it's a good thing I have you to uh, explain. Well, I, I'm a little bit shocked. It's the central, it, it is, in fact, the central uh, riveting finality of the thing. It, it's like, holy fuck, I didn't expect that. Right. It's a bit like missing the Statue of Liberty at the end of Planet of the Apes. <laughs> oh, like, Lord. Hmm. oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Well, uh, but um, what I'm what I'm taken of is you know um, uh, Brennan the the, the woman uh, yes uh, their characters and why am I so bad at knowing these characters names but she uh, was in that um, great series from long ago many many episodes ago of the people that were taken apparently uh, uh, in the rapture yes Le- leftovers leftovers she yes. was the non speaking yep woman yep. all yep. dressed yep. in white yep, yep. and yep. here she is now some 10 years later certainly maybe yep. not 10 so. maybe not 10 mm, yeah but 10. did you notice and this is uh, and, and i almost hate to bring it up because i love her but the, how bow-legged she is no oh my I god did not. you need to go back and look at when the opening scene when she's walking from the car she looks hmm. like she looks like she's just got off a very round horse <laughs> anyway she's riveting she's riveting um, and Bridges is just unbelievably sound. I mean, he he's good. Yeah, just every every moment uh, with him is amazing. The um, <clears throat> so remember that John Lithgow video that I what I said where he talked about his different roles. Um, that was recorded after the old man, and he talked about this role, and he talked about how uh, he had, you know. On the very short list of actors he w- was dying to work with, Jeff Bridges was at the top, and that uh, they had never worked together, and that uh, and also they weren't together a lot in the filming of this because their characters right. were in different places. Um, and before I before it was even out, uh, he talked about how there's this one scene where we're driving in a car through Morocco, uh, yeah. and he said that um, we that took us six days to shoot. And he, so he spent six days in, in a car with Jeff Bridges, and he said that uh, they just became best friends, you're trading stories and telling jokes and um, just bonding. Uh, six and, days. I know it well, and it, it had six cars in it. Right. You know, <clears throat> explosions <throat> and, and, and John Lithgow's character. Uh, you know what I love, too? When, uh, when they first flash back to... Yes. Uh, Cage's uh, Chase's character when he was a young man, Johnny. Yeah. When he was a young man, riding up on a horse. The dude, yes, that dude who played him, is the same guy who played a young Mickey Rourke in um, uh, uh, what's this? Uh, Ray Donovan. <laughs> okay. And he played big time episodes, but he does a he does a voice impersonation early on, and then doesn't do it much after that of Jeff Bridges to let you know. And the way the camera angle is, it, 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 it captures him. But how about when his character meets up with John Lithgow's character, who's a young 35-year-old man yep. with glasses, right? And nailed the voice. Yes. Just nailed John Lithgow's characterization. I, I laughed out loud. I thought it was so good. Yep. That, was, that is good. So I just looked up that actor. Um, his name's Bill Heck, which is a... Who? What name? The the guy you said was in Ray Donovan. Um, and turns out, uh, did you know there's a Ray Donovan movie? Yes, saw it twice. You saw it already. Okay, so and you are right. He does play young Mickey. Yeah, it was um, a little predictable, and if you've been uh, soaking in that universe for a while, it probably would be. Yeah, um, but it, I was struck by how old. Um, he looked and acted hmm. kind of out of shape, maybe a little bit. I don't know. Um, 
who am I, who am I to judge people who are in shape or out of shape? Yeah, oh, indeed. my word. Interesting. Uh, I, I know that, um, that, that woman from, um, she, Amy Brennan, Brennan or whatever her name is, uh, she had a TV show well, a long time ago. Her name's not Amy. Her first name is the name that's strange. And it's no. Brenneman, I think, rather than Brennan. It is Amy. Amy? Yep. And, and, no, and her character is Zoe. But, yeah, but yeah, the, the, the actress's the name actress is Amy. Is, Amy is short for something because that's not her first full name. Well, I think it is. But no, it, but she, uh, she, I got to know her when she was playing a character named Amy, the titular character on um, on a TV show called Judging Amy. I don't know if you saw that, where she uh, she plays a, a judge who uh, has to. No. Um, it was in from 1999 to 2005, um, and she she plays a judge in a juvenile court, or where she's huh. she's always she's always deciding either how to punish juveniles or uh, like custody cases, and so she does a bunch it? of. Hmm? How was it? It was great. I I, yeah. I used to like that show a lot. Um, Lots of characters are more about the judge. I mean, it's her, her family, um, is, is constant. Uh, her family is played by Ty, her, her mother is played by, uh, Tyne Daly of Cagney and Lacey fame. Uh, but anyway, um, <clears throat> it, it was a good show. Uh, very thoughtful, you know, empathizing with, with, with the kids and trying to be an honorable judge in a way that, uh, that was fun to watch, but yeah, very episodic, you know, any, any law and order type, uh, movie, uh, TV show, you can make it so episodic that every, yeah. every, every time there's a different case and then you can right. keep on that case. So, right. Right. But yeah, right. she was good in that. Well, I'll tell you, it's, uh, it, the weather here, speaking of weather has been so fabulous, 75 degrees, light breeze, 80 something in the sun at the heat of the day, but the side of the house I'm working on is in the shade at like starting at two o'clock. Um, but I just love this time of year. I, I and it, it stands in such contrast to winter, which I'm, I've got to rethink my winters. Yeah. I can't be miserable. I can't travel like I used to. I used to be gone so much of the winter for right. years and years. And now I'm not. And it's like, I've got to figure out. And I used to cross country ski. I don't think I want to do that. Maybe I should just cross, you know, if there's enough snow. Uh, yeah. You live in a place think, with, with harsh winters. I think I'm going to start uh, to learn how to ice fish again. Rejuvenate okay. my ice fishing career. Well, anyway, I shouldn't be talking about winter now, but the sons of bitches in the the media are talking. You know, and the sales are now, and they're, you know, they're putting winter clothes out in the in the stores. They do that. It's, it's so annoying. My, my wife hates like, that so much. Give me a break, would you? It's not. It isn't time to change the season. Yet. I'm, yeah. Forgive me. They they must have figured out that that's profitable in some way, but it's I. I well, well, you don't. People don't buy stuff unless you put it in front of them. That's true. Pretty good theory. <laughs> but there are people. What, what's what's true is this: people aren't buying stuff for summer anymore. Well, that's, that's for sure. There's your issue. But at least go I, with autumn, right? Not winter. It's been super hot here. We uh, actually, when hot. I was in the when I was in the states, they had r- really bad heat waves here. It was up to a hundred, and and remember, no air conditioning. And uh, but this week it's gotten up to close to no ninety. Air conditioning at your dad's house? No, here in Spain. Oh, oh, oh. when I was there, it was really hot here. I w- so oh, I missed oh, that I part. See. But now it's really hot here, and I am here. Uh, it's and not no quite as hot. But uh, I've just been working with a fan in my face all day long. Uh, oh, hot. Plus it's my hot. like uh, high eighties, ninety. But oh. w- but with well, no AC. That's not, yeah, that's not too terrible. I would. I, 80s. I mean, I'm in 80s now, and we were in the 90s hot. We went to the beach. It was 90 degrees that day. We sat in the shade of a tree. Yeah, that gets hotter than shit. You got to yeah. move the air around. That's the only way to do it. Exactly. And uh, and this apartment is all south facing, so it, it gets the sun throughout the entire day. Uh, you can make and, an air conditioning unit out of a five gallon pail in a couple of hours for less than 50 bucks. You know, just YouTube it. Yeah. Of course, if you don't, care about it, doesn't require ice. No. No. Sorry, my cat is attacking something. Oh, um, what the cat's name you were looking at? Because I know you're alone. I know, right? 
about the cat. Yeah. Oh, it's, Lord. Well, I'm a, I'm on a, a Rodriguez uh, starting on Friday. My wife's nice. taking uh, old Pop Dan up up north to go see his uh, other daughter and mm-hmm. their extended family. I'm a, a bit a bit sad I can't go, but I had said we both had said early on when we were thinking about our summer. She said, and I agreed, how much she didn't want to take this trip, and she wouldn't because right. it was too beautiful here, and we were already gone for over a week when we went camping and. We just hate to leave. I, you know, we agreed sure. on that, and then she changed her mind, and I didn't. Oops. And um, I ended up lining up. I'm doing this construction work at my son's house, but because my son is uh, off for the summer, he's doing jobs, and I bid on the doing the spray washing and spray painting the fence next door, huh. my neighbor. So we're going to do that when we come back, and he's going to make about four or five hundred bucks in three days. I'm going to make uh, a couple hundred, maybe. I hope he'll do most of the work and. I won't have to do much, but um, but I'm doing that while she's gone in Rodriguez. I'm also uh, taking, you know, I've told you how I took the concrete slab out back and, and painted squares in. I showed you pictures. Yes, yes. And uh, the next step of that is to stain or dye those big pads of, of a shade of some of one of 12 colors. And I'm just going with a with a gray. Hmm. But that'll 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 be what I'm doing while he's doing the other work. And uh, got to keep busy. Got to got to have a project, otherwise. Well, these windows are a bitch, man. <laughs> they take so long. Imagine four coats of paint, and the primer dries in an hour, solid, because mm-hmm. it's a special quick drying primer. And one really good brand of paint I have dries hard coat in two hours. And uh, the cheaper brand of paint dries hard coat in four hours. And so I've got four different colored paints and they're different drying times and anything that's going to take four hours to dry, you better plan on getting it done sometime mid morning. Right. Cause uh, it'll be dry two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And I don't like today I had a hard stop at quarter to four and mm-hmm. I put it three thirty. went to the wide, took a shower all this time. My truck battery died. So I've got a super little uh, pack that I've been, that I bought that isn't any bigger than a battery pack for your truck. Yeah, and it's only about yay big, the size of a, a woman's small a small purse, mm-hmm. um, and uh, comes in a bag, and you charge it in your car, and it's got two little clips on it, positive and negative, and um, it charged it, it started that car up twice, one charge, but it, my battery shot, so I got to get a new battery. Yeah, I would get a new battery for you. It's gonna be like, hundred seventy bucks for a fucking battery. Well, ouch! But you're gonna make that painting fences, so. <laughs> well, yeah, there it goes. As my as as my wife taught me years ago, repeat after me: "There's always enough money. There's always enough money. There's always enough money. Mm-hmm. Somewhere over the rainbow, <laughs> birds fly high. I know over the rainbow there's a sty in my eye. It's red and pussy bothering me, and I don't know what will happen." Me. I could go on for hours. Seven more verses. <laughs> Second best, same as the wolves. A little bit louder and a little bit worse. I'm Henry the Eighth, I am. Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. I got married to the widow next door. She'd been married seven times before, and everyone was a Henry. Henry. No one was a Willie nor a Sam. No, I say, I'm the Eighth Old Man, I'm Henry. Henry the eighth, I am, I am. Henry the eighth, I am. Third verse, same as the verse. A little bit louder and a little bit worse. And you get it. You got it. You know where I first heard that song? In the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze and Whoopi Goldberg and Demi Moore. The the way that that Patrick Swayze, the ghost, convinces um, Whoopi Goldberg, the medium, to help him is by oh, lying, right. lying on the floor all night long singing that song yes. until she just can't take it anymore. And she's like, fine, I'll, I'll yes. go and try and find your, your girlfriend. That's right. That was about the last movie. I, Whoopi Goldberg was a great actor. Remember The Color Purple? Her yeah. acting debut, I think. It's astounding. Well, listen, man, I got to go. I got to fluff off, baby. I'm going to listen to some live music at O'Duffy's Pub. All right, we'll see if we can stitch these recordings together. And, yeah, uh, well, uh, I'll just leave this on, of course. Yep. And uh, ciao, baby. It's ciao. Great to see you. Yeah. And I'm so glad you caught up with with your homework, man. That's good. That's yeah, good man. We get the score. Exactly. Ciao. All right. See you next week.
Okay, that's it for episode number 157. You can find the show notes at happyhour.fm slash 157, where you can find the link to the John Lithgow interview where he talks about his iconic characters. I even put in a link to The Life of Riley, if you remember that from the throwaway comment at the beginning. Anyway, support us at patreon.com slash happyhour. See you next week.